If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, have you ever had a ghost, shadow, or demon encounter? Anything in the realm of the unexplained? If so, what's your story? I have been in haunting situations, but my dad has actually seen one. He was asleep one night, many years ago, sleeping over at his boyfriend's house. He woke up and said he was immediately scared. He saw a man, very short and black colored, blacker than the pitch dark room, walk up to the foot of his bed, rest his elbows upon the bed, and put his head in his hands. My dad nudged his boyfriend and asked, are you awake? And he said, yes. And my dad said, can you see it? And he replied, he's been standing in the corner for 20 minutes, and I couldn't wake you up. I wish I was joking. One night, at around 4 or so, I had been awake just wasting my sleep away on my phone. It had been raining, and I was suddenly feeling very scared, quite possibly a gut feeling of some sort. I heard a knock come from my window, so I looked over to investigate. Of course, when I explained this story, most people told me it was the rain. But the knocking was definitely a lot louder and stood out from all the pitter-patter. And as if on cue, lightning strikes, and I see the outline of a hand and an arm resting on the glass pane and clenched in a fist. Yeah, hell no. I freaked out. I looked back again, and the hand was gone. I don't normally believe in paranormal stuff, so I keep telling myself that I am hearing and seeing things. I was on the second floor for Pete's sakes. No one would possibly be insane enough to just decide to knock on my window. At least that's what I tell myself. My parents' house is seven miles from the Manassas battlefield from the Civil War. I don't know if that's important, but there are a lot of urban legends about how spooky an area is. When I was in maybe fourth grade, I woke up and saw an outline of a bluish teenage girl in an old-style nightgown. She was at the foot of my bed, looking at me. I blinked, and she was gone. I figured it was just a dream until years later, when I was in high school, my younger sister came to me and said, I want to tell you something, but you have to promise not to laugh. She proceeded to tell me that when she was walking down to the basement the night before, she thought she saw a teenage girl in a nightgown. When she blinks, the girl is gone. I told her my story, and we were just like, okay, feelings validated, but duck. Fast forward to when my sister and I were both in college. We were visiting home for Christmas, and my dad drunkenly told us about the time he saw a teenage girl in an old-style nightgown looking at the Christmas tree years before. All of us only saw her once and haven't experienced anything else. Ten years ago, I went to the Montparnasse Cemetery in Paris to see Baudelaire's grave with my mom and my friend. I decided to take a walk alone on a path near the street and admire the architecture. Twenty minutes later, I was calling my friend and told him that I would go back to our car and wait for them there, and as I was just saying that, a woman dressed in black walked on the path in the opposite direction, pushing a loud cart. I stood up still and continued my phone call, but then. She literally disappeared behind a goddamn grave while casually walking. Blink ten times and run out of the cemetery like Forrest Gump. I still don't know what I saw. My first apartment was haunted by a little boy. Lying in bed at night, something was gently pinching my big toe. It was enough to wake me up, and I could still feel it but I was too scared to look down at what it could be. After a few times of this, I even whispered to it, please let me go. And the feeling slowly left my foot. It happened a few more times before I told my husband. He told me to wake him up next time it happened. So a few nights later, I feel the hand holding my toe, so I nudge my husband and say, hey, babe? He says, do you feel it? I said, yes. He whispers back, okay, cause I feel him too. My cousin and I recalled this experience at her grandmom's house that I had blocked out of my mind. Her grandmom was bedridden at the time and the only one living in the house. We were laying in bed watching a show when our bedroom door cracked. We could hear her grandmom snoring lightly, her room was only separated from ours by the bathroom. I get sick to my stomach thinking about this next part, we started hearing footsteps in the hall. We immediately thought her grandmom had gotten out of bed, but we could still hear her snoring. The footsteps were slow and heavy, then got closer. I was truly paralyzed with fear. My cousin sidestepped to the door and quickly closed it with a fully outstretched arm. When we told my aunt the next day, she said, yeah, imagine how I felt growing up there. They won't hurt you. We had heard stories of the house being haunted, but that was our only first-hand experience. Truly terrifying. Growing up, there were constant strange activities in my house. Electronics would turn off and on, and footsteps would be heard in empty rooms. A few times when I was home alone, I heard voices. The worst, or creepiest, 
was when I was a child and fixing dinner. I needed to get something from our upstairs hall pantry. I walked towards the stairs and froze. I don't know why, but I couldn't move. I was terrified. My dog came up to me, looked towards the stairs, and started growling and showing his teeth. He also pushed me back, so he was in front of me, snapping at whatever was on the stairs. It was only my father and me at home. My mother and my brother were out, and we lived on the second floor. Our doors were locked, and no one could get in without us knowing, so whatever it was, it wasn't human. My father came over to see why our dog was freaking out, and when I told him, he said I was being silly and went to the stairs. He got to the doorway and froze. He looked scared and told me to take the dog, go get my uncle from across the street, and stay outside until he said I did as I was told. This was almost 30 years ago. I never knew what was there. They never told me. I never felt fear like that again in that house, though. Me and two of my siblings were home alone upstairs, and we heard the front door open, so someone went to check outside the door, and I checked the porch, but no one was there. We thought it was nothing, so we left it, but once we sat back down, we heard running downstairs in the basement and a child's voice asking, is someone here? I'm looking for my mom. My brother ran downstairs, and still there was nobody. Here, it is normal to have a haunted house, and, as our ancestors believed, we shouldn't really give the spirits any attention. So we ignored it and watched a movie until our parents came home. We moved away years ago and found out we had lived on an old cemetery site. A few years ago, I was driving on the highway by myself. It was a beautiful, clear, sunny day. There is not a cloud in the sky. I was driving behind a semi, and there was a red car behind me. I looked down for a split second to adjust the volume on the stereo. When I looked up, a thick fog had rolled in, and the semi was on its side, sliding towards me so fast that I knew there was nothing I could do to avoid it. I absolutely knew with complete certainty that I was about to die. I was just overwhelmed by this deep devastation that I wouldn't get to see my daughter grow up. It was the most intense emotion I have ever felt in my life. By a landslide. I opened my mouth to scream or gasp or something and must have blinked because, just like that, the semi was upright in the lane, driving normally, and there was no fog, the sun was out, there were no clouds, and the red car was still behind me. I wasn't on drugs or medication. I wasn't overtired, I have never hallucinated, and I was mentally and emotionally stable. It was so real. I remember the tendrils of fog being pushed out of the way by the sliding semi. I had to pull over and lose my shit because I'd just been about to die. I don't have a rational explanation. I've never experienced anything similar before or since then. I know in my bones that what I experienced was real. I don't drive behind semis anymore, and I stay off the highway on foggy days. I was drowning at age 4 trying to get my Happy Meal toy that kept floating away. It was an inflatable treasure box toy from Burger King. My mom got tired of fetching it, and I couldn't swim. I let go of the wall, reaching for it at the deeper end, and went under. Struggling, a woman came out of nowhere and reached out to pull me out. A tall, skinny black woman in a brown ripped up long shirt or short dress with big flowing hair. I thanked her, and she said you're welcome, baby, and was gone. My mom came rushing over after seeing that my head had been underwater and what side of the pool I had gotten out on. Even she believes me. There's no way I got over there and made it out without help. Fast forward 20 years later, and I drove back to that apartment complex to drive by the pool where this happened because I was in the area. I didn't know it then, but there is a cemetery right behind the complex where our building was. That day, 20 years ago, I saw the woman disappear down a passageway going behind the buildings before she just disappeared. The cemetery is back there. I didn't know that, so I never included that detail. I got chills all over again that day. I was playing hide and seek with two of my sisters, the youngest was found by the older, and they were both looking for me. I hid under the blue kitty pool that was overturned. Mom just said he was on the other side of the house. They began sprinting by the kitty pool, and there was just enough space for me to see their feet. I saw the youngest run by first, then the eldest. Then I saw two pale, veiny feet walk by slowly but carefully. Whoever it was started screaming in a howling manner. I slowly put the kitty pool on the ground and tried not to make any noise. They found me immediately after asking why I gave away my spot. I was walking through these woods. I can't really say they were foods, they were just a bunch of trees behind a plaza and surrounded by a neighborhood, but I'm going to call it the woods for this story. Even before this, the place always made me uneasy, but it was winter and I was wanting to hurry to my grandma's house, I was walking over there after school. I'm walking through, and in the corner of my eye, I see this shadowy figure. 
I look over, and there's nothing there. I keep walking, and I can't explain it, but I knew someone was watching me. I keep walking, I'm almost out now, I just want it out of there. Before I left, I turned around and saw a horde of shadowy people standing on the path. There were others walking around in the trees. They were all facing me. So I turned and ran out of there, and they ceased to follow me. I haven't been back to the woods since, nor have I had a run-in with a shadow figure again. I was walking up my stairs one morning when I was 16. I had just gotten up from a heavy sleep, so I was pretty groggy. I had my big blanket wrapped around me like a cape. About one third of the way up the stairs, I slipped and started to fall back. I thought oh no, this is going to hurt. But it didn't, nothing happened. I felt like I had been caught in mid-air, but like someone had me around the waist with two abnormally large hands. At this point, I was fully awake, I couldn't feel anything under my feet, and I was just a hint taller than I should be. I stayed perfectly still, not quite knowing if I had died or if I had fallen into another universe. But then I was moving up the stairs again and gently landed at the top, where my dog had been waiting for me. My dog was now looking behind me, tail straight, ears pointed, unwavering stare into the darkness that was the basement. I didn't turn around. I just nodded and said, thank you, and went to the living room to sit down. It was only then that I really realized what had happened. I wasn't scared or afraid, but I do say hello to the basement darkness whenever I can now. I have so many, but my favorite one to tell is our witching hour kitchen man. My dad's house is from the 1940s and typically has the usual creaks and moans of an old house. That being said, there were other noises that were absolutely different. Voices heard cheering me on when singing to myself home alone, taps and knocks on my bedroom door playing skunk in the barnyard and other little tunes, the basement door opening and closing by itself despite being fully closed, latched, and having no circulation of airflow in the basement. However, one of my favorite paranormal activities is our witching hour kitchen man. I rarely sleep before 4 a.m. most nights and tend to get hungry in the middle of the night. One night, about five to six years ago, I was going to the kitchen, all the lights were off, and it was about 3 a.m. I suddenly hear heavy, boot-like footsteps just meandering around the kitchen, and the rest of my family is completely asleep. I'm about to cross the threshold from the carpeted hallway into the tiled kitchen, and I stop dead. I ask if someone's there, and I audibly hear the steps stop for half a second, as if someone were caught off guard. Now, my philosophy with the supernatural and paranormal is respect them, and they'll respect you. So, I politely asked if whatever was walking could be quiet just so I could get a snack. Then everything went dead silent. No footsteps, no hum of appliances, no wind rattling windows, no creaks, nothing. I walked across the kitchen floor, turned on the light, got my snack, turned the light off, and left. Once I was back in the hallway, I said, thank you, you can do what you were doing again now. At that moment, I heard a loud thud and a sharp hill strike on the floor behind me, and the refrigerator started humming again. I still hear the kitchen pacer to this day every once in a while, and I always ask to get a snack if I hear him. I've had a bunch, but one that stands out was probably the time my then youngest son got me up crying about a bad dream he was having at 3 a.m. he was 4 at the time. I calmed him down, then he told me he's hungry, so we went to the kitchen for a snack. He's sitting there eating cereal when he just kind of looks up and then casually tells me the boy who woke him up is sitting in the corner crying. And he nods to an empty corner of the room by the table where we're seated. I asked him why the kid was crying, just kind of humoring him when he tells me, his mommy crashed the car up the road, and now he's trying to figure out what's going on. He woke me up, please tell him to go. So me thinking it's my kid still shook from the bad dream. I looked at the corner and said, hey kid, go back to your mom. We keep sitting there, and my son finishes his cereal and hands me the bowl. Just kind of joking around, I asked him if it worked, and the kid left. And he looks at me really seriously and says, yes, he told me the ambulance is coming, so it's okay. They're all dead anyway. And not even a minute later, a string of cop cars and an ambulance go past our house, sirens blazing. And I got this feeling of the most intense dread while the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I shook it off, told myself it was just a kid's imagination, and by coincidence, we went back to bed. A few days later, my neighbor tells me all about the big wreck a mile up the street from us, where some lady was going too fast and flipped the car, coming around a curve, and no one survived. At 3 o'clock in the morning on the night my kid had woken me up, I didn't dare ask her if a little boy was in the car. My mother was not the best of people. She was 19 when she had me and was completely unprepared to be a parent. She would lock me in my room for hours on end so that she wouldn't have to pay attention to me and often forget to feed me. So many other things, I was generally a miserable child. 
she passed away in a car accident when I was almost 11 years old, and the next year, my dad moved my whole family to a different state. I was relieved, as I had been relentlessly bullied for my entire school career up to this point. I saw this as my chance to start over, change my personality, and hopefully have friends. I did make friends, and at a sleepover one night, one of the girls pulled out an Ouija board, and we started to play. We had no less than four or five girls with their hands on the planchette, and another was writing down the letters as they were spelled out. I had been playing with the planchette, but I got up to get a glass of water. When I came back, I took over the writing duties. This means that during this time, my hands were nowhere near the planchette. The board was on the floor, and I was sitting on the bed. One of the girls said, are there spirits present that have a message for one of us? The planchette started moving rapidly, back and forth, up and down, and I was writing down letters as quickly as possible. The message? Claudia says hi, Magoo. Claudia was my mother's first name. Magoo was her nickname for me as a child, because I could never find the things she asked me to find. There is no possible way that any of those girls knew either of these things. Those girls swore that my face turned white when I reread the message. All I really remember is throwing down the notepad and pen and running back home, thankfully, only two blocks, at midnight in my nightgown, with the other girls running after me. They managed to convince me to come back to the party. We burned the Ouija board in the outdoor barbecue pit that night. In my dad's old house, we were told by all the neighbors that the place was haunted. We never really had an issue, so we shrugged it off. One night my dad had a guy sleeping over, he was gay, and the guy woke up freaking out, saying a blonde-haired man was sitting in the closet. My dad saw nothing, but the guy still got dressed and left. About six months later, we were having a Christmas party with my dad's family, and my nanny said she was feeling ill and wanted to lie down. My dad offered her his bed and said if she decided to sleep over, he would sleep on the couch. She went to bed, and the rest of us kept talking and eating. About an hour later, we hear her scream, and we start running for the room as she is running away from it. We ask, what happened? And she says there was a man in the closet. The rest of the guests just shrug it off and kind of exchange glances like yeah, right. But my dad and I are like, what did he look like? Big, she said, and blonde hair. He moved out six weeks later but never slept in the room again. A few years back, my family and I visited my grandparents in Mexico. I was told that when they were building the house that my grandparents live in, they found a bunch of bones there. I heard a lot of stories of weird things going on in the house from my family members that live there, but I didn't want to believe them. So one night I was fast asleep when I got woken up by the sounds of dogs barking like mad outside. I lifted my head up, and when I did, I heard someone or something yell directly into my ear. They yelled so loudly that my ear was ringing. My parents were both in the same room, sleeping, and I asked if they heard anything. They told me to go to sleep, and I just imagined it. To this day, I have never wanted to go back. That was just one of the paranormal or weird moments I've had. I was once camping on the side of a mountain in the country with two friends. We were all rather merry, brought some whiskey along, and so on. At one point, at about 2 o'clock in the morning, I decided to go for a walk on my own. The stars were out alongside the moon. It was a wonderful, calm night. I walked off in the direction of a forest, which was at the top of the mountain. The forest was incredibly isolated, miles away from anywhere, and it was made up of long, thin pine trees. It actually looked really daunting, but for some reason I was drawn to it. I checked around, I was about a mile and a half away from my friends at the tent. As I walked into the forest, I started to feel really odd. I don't know if it was anything to do with the buzz from the whiskey earlier or just my brain reacting oddly to the horror film external stimuli that I was being drawn to, but I felt odd. I continued walking in a straight line, sliding between the pine trees, and pushed forward deeper into the forest. Now it is at this point that something happened, and I still have no logical way to explain it. It certainly did happen, I'm sure of that. It wasn't in my mind. I was deep in the forest, tired, and getting rather claustrophobic. My torch was having a few problems, and so I decided to turn back and meet back up with my friends at the camp, they'd probably have passed out now anyway. Now, as I turned around to head out of the forest, I heard a slight noise. It got louder and louder and nearer and nearer. Then it stopped. At this point, I was freaking out a little, but the noises were obviously just from deer or from wildlife, and so I paid no heed to them. I continued walking, but the noise returned, closer this time. I now stopped to listen for the second time, and the hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I felt slightly off once again. It's important to visualize what this forest looked like. 
Incredibly dark and dense, pine trees close to each other, not a lot of room. The stars were barely visible through the heights of the pines, and there was a perpetual creaking from the breeze. If you were claustrophobic, you would not want to be there. I heard the noise again. I turned around and shone my torch into the deeper part of the woods. There was nothing there, empty and unsettling. The old trees creaked again, then the noise returned. The noise of movement it was getting louder and louder, closer and closer. A kind of sickly scraping across the dead leaves of the forest floor it was getting closer, almost as if it were coming towards me. I shone my torch ahead, and I stood deadly still. Then, across the yellow beams of my torch, about four feet in front of me, a human man ran past me. I remember clearly that he was wearing some kind of suit, and he moved in a rather languid manner. He ran past me, I never saw his face. I shone my torch after him. I called after him in shock. I managed to follow him with the beam of my torch, but he ran with such speed and accuracy between the thick, dark pine trees that I had no chance. He disappeared, and I never got a chance to see his face. It just really freaks me out whenever I remember this. I was in the complete middle of nowhere, miles and miles away from society, at the back of a mountain. And before you ask, no, it wasn't one of my friends. I know that they'd have grown up after a while. The man in the suit remains a complete mystery to me. I checked the newspaper the day after, no crimes were committed, nobody was on the run. Just one witness, me, to a suited man running through a pine forest in the dead of night. I was 19 and living at home. I woke up one night and saw this huge, it was almost reaching the ceiling, black hooded thing. It was just standing there next to my wardrobe. I froze and stayed in bed, too scared to move. It was there for about 10 seconds before it vanished. I had nightmares for weeks with that thing in it. Fast forward 15 years, and my younger sister, who has had my old room for years, asks me if I have ever seen anything weird in the bedroom and tells me about the hooded thing that she has seen. I never told anyone about what I saw, especially not my sister, who was only four at the time. In my mid-teens, I would stay home during the summer, often by myself, while I was working, and my parents camped at a national park as campground hosts. Pretty sweet as a kid, parents show up every couple weeks to buy food and do laundry, then are off again. My cousin, who was my same age, would come and hang out and watch movies with me, play video games, and all that stuff. We were interested in the paranormal, and he claimed to know a guy who talked to demons or spirits and was dabbling in dark things. I wasn't sure I understood all of that, but it was a fun discussion nonetheless. At the end of an evening of having these conversations about things we had personally experienced or things our family members had related to us, I drove him home. As I drive him home, the discussion goes more to the dark spirits or demons avenue and how he was interested in seeing if it was real and what he could do with that kind of contact. I don't remember the specifics of the whole conversation, but as I pull up to his house, which was on a corner with a streetlight on his corner property, and am counseling him to maybe rethink this, I look up into the rearview mirror and see something I won't forget. A tall shadow, directly beneath the streetlight, no discernible features whatsoever, was just pitch black, with what looked like a hat on. I snap around quickly to see this shadow without the mirror, and, naturally, it's gone. There was no hint of where it went, and if it had been a person, there was enough open ground surrounding the area that I wouldn't have missed it retreating in any direction. I tell my cousin that we are not speaking about this further and that he should go inside, light a candle, say prayers, meditate, or do whatever worked for him because something was listening. I bought a house that was a foreclosure in Alaska. Shen we moved into the house just had weird vibes, nothing too crazy but just felt off. We got it for a steal, so we decided that we just needed to get used to a new place. It wasn't long before my then three-year-old son started asking us to tell the man in the hat he can't look at me anymore and asked us about why daddy has red eyes. It turns out he was seeing someone standing in his doorway at night and staring at him. Later on, we would start hearing conversations from the office downstairs. When we would investigate, the voices would stop as soon as the door opened. The conversations were more murmur than actual words but had an inflection that made you believe that two people were having a heated argument. When we would sit in the basement, I had converted it into a theater, we would hear walking upstairs and more voices. Doors would slam, and one snowy day we heard the door to the garage slam, steps on the landing, and then nothing. I went to investigate with my pistol in hand, as our neighbors were suspected heroin dealers, and I found a wet boot print on the landing. Just one. All the doors were locked, and the garage was dry. The kicker was the night my wife got grabbed. I was sitting in the living room, and she had gone to bed to read. I heard her scream and react as if she thought I had snuck into the room and grabbed her thigh. It's not unlike me to do such a thing, 
However, when she heard the Lay's boy recliner move and me scramble towards her, she knew she had been grabbed. We found writing in the walls during construction, and the writing consisted of full daily journal entries from when the house was built. Personal entries documenting what happened on the specific day. The creepiest one for me is the voices of my other family members talking and calling my name in the middle of the night while I clearly can see them sleeping in front of me. When I was a kid, I said it must be me hallucinating, I was that kid who couldn't sleep because he was so afraid to do so, so that was my guess. There is a lot more to that, I didn't notice them, and my mom refused to tell me about them. But one day, like two years ago, I am 22 years old now, she mentioned that my doll would laugh at night when we were all asleep, and my parents heard her multiple times, damn, I haven't slept in the same room with a doll ever since. The funny part about that is that I remember my dad asking me if I was playing with my doll at night, they heard her laughing, but it was in my closet near the room, so nah. My ex mentioned that their old house was kind of weird, they used to see some green to black gases getting out of the house at night. Not to mention that all those of the old generations used to see things like shadows in the forest at night. The house I grew up in was haunted. The way it was laid out, I could see from my bedroom down the hall and into the living room that my parents' bedroom door was on the other side of the living room, directly across from my door. Late at night, I would hear someone pacing circles in the living room, but I was the only one awake in the house, and we didn't have pets. I never said anything because I didn't want the family to think I was nuts. Eventually, I moved out and went to college. After I graduated, I was in a rough spot financially. My parents had bought a new house, the old one was still empty, they were considering getting renters, and offered it to me to stay in for a while. I said no, I didn't want to move in, and mom asked why. I finally gave in and told her I thought there was a ghost. My mom frowned and turned to look at me, and it was like you heard her too. It turns out she had also heard it for years and didn't say anything for the same reason. My mom moved us into a new home. She was in the living room trying to hook the cable up, and I was in her room roughly 10 feet away. She kept asking me to turn the TV on to see if it connected, but every time I turned it on, it was loud static. When I turned the TV off after another unsuccessful attempt, there was a large, solid black human-like figure standing behind me in the reflection of the TV. I was facing the only entrance, and I was 100% alone in that room. It was the middle of the day, but all our curtains were closed, so there wasn't a reflection from outside. I ran like hell, and when I told my mom, she didn't believe me. My brother and I consistently had experiences over the many years we lived there. Every single night, you would hear and feel someone running back and forth down the hallway. My brother and I were across the hall from each other, but we were on the opposite side of the house from my mom, behind a closed door, with our only pet, a dog, R.I.P. So many nights we'd both look out our doors at the same time to see if it was the other person, but nothing. We learned to live with it as it never stopped. Another time in broad daylight, I watched my dog walk into a room we used as storage in the same hallway. I laughed and went down the hall to get him out, saying something like, silly boy, you can't go in there, but when I turned into the room, it was empty. I was super weirded out because I watched my entire dog walk in. When I got back down the hallway, I saw my dog through our glass door, fast asleep on the patio. There was no exit point from that room except a window that wouldn't really open, so it stayed closed and locked. When my brother and I moved out, my mom finally agreed that the house was haunted. She woke up in her room to a dark, human-like figure standing over her. When she turned on the lamp on her nightstand, it was gone. I grew up in a hella haunted old house. Weird little things had happened for years and years, noises here and there, shadows, and figures. As a young child, my parents would find me in rooms by myself, talking to the blue shadow giant in the corner. I can still picture him perfectly. I could write a novel of the experiences in that house, but the worst one happened one of the last days I stayed the night there before we moved. It was an old house, and the roof leaked. I was on the third floor, so I had some pots and pans on my floor to catch leaking water. The floorboards also shifted like crazy when you walked across the floor, so whenever anyone walked into the room, you'd hear the pots and pans clink as the boards shifted and they tapped each other. Anyway, one night I'm asleep in bed across from the entry to the room, and I hear the clink of the pots and a footstep creaking the floor. I wake up. I lay still for a moment and kept my eyes closed, when suddenly I felt the need to open them, and standing over me was the shadow man I had seen as a child, with the blue hue and everything. He had huge, broad shoulders and was like 7 or 8 feet tall. He didn't move, he just hovered over me. I closed my eyes and pulled the blanket over me, and he was gone. The next morning, I started to tell my mom and said, I awoke to a man. 
She cut me off and started to describe the exact man I had seen to a T. She's been seeing him for years too, we just never talked about it. I have one story I cannot explain. When I was in college in the summer, I worked in a glass factory in the basement. Nothing weird, well lit, just the very bottom of the building. Anyway, we would stack pallets, and when full, a forklift would take them into the warehouse. You had to have your head swiveled because there were many moving lifts, tow vehicles, and other assorted dangers. It was an old place, but, like I said, not ominous. So one day, during the day, I was working, just finishing one pallet, and about to move on to the next to start. I looked up, and an African man in overalls was standing about 10 yards in front of me, staring at me. I stopped, not really scared, more WTF. Then I noticed that although his head and body were normal, his legs seemed to fuzz out into nothing, and his clothes just seemed dated. That's all, because as I stopped for those few seconds looking at this thing, a large, bulky, 1,000 pound pallet fell off a trailer into the area I was about to enter. If I had not seen what I saw, I would not have hesitated and would have been crushed. I like to think about this event, and at the same time, it was weird. So last summer, my band went on a West Coast tour, and we had a show in Roswell. I was madly excited because I've been wanting to visit Roswell since I was little, checking out the same UFO book from the school library over and over. Anyway, we explored the city and played the show, and it was a great experience. We had a long drive to Tucson to pick up a friend from the airport, so we decided to drive overnight as it would be easiest to make it there on time. I know it seems awfully convenient that something would happen in Roswell, and I had that in mind because it would seem easy to make up the story, but something happened about 45 minutes outside of Roswell once we started our overnight drive. I'm riding shotgun as our drummer is driving the first shift. We are on these winding backroad highways that are awesome and give us an immaculate view of the stars. So yeah, roughly 45 minutes away from Roswell, we are coming up to this bend in the highway, and to the left of the van, we see a light. It appears to be a light on a barn, as we assumed it was from someone's property in the woods, but that assumption quickly changed when the light started moving and keeping pace with the van. This bend was going to the right, so we weren't circling a light in the woods, and there wasn't an access road, so it wasn't coming from a car. This light was just steadily keeping pace with us at about 75 miles per hour and weaving in and out of the tree line. Sometimes it would move behind the trees, and then it would just dart out from the trees, still effortlessly matching our speed. The light wasn't all that bright, or so it didn't shine a lot of light. I don't know how to explain it, but it was this bright ball of light that was roughly the size of an exercise ball. It seemed really bright, but it didn't really light up anything around it. Even when it got about 15 feet from the left side of the van, it was just, there. At this point, our drummer and I are yelling, what the duck is that? Do you see this shit? And then, after about 30 seconds of following us, it stops dead in its tracks, about 10 feet off the ground, on the side of the road. No slowing down. Just as if it hit a wall, it immediately stopped in its tracks. We just kept driving, bewildered, and looked at it in the rear view mirror until the road took it out of view. There's still no logical explanation, as we talked for hours about what it could have been. Maybe there is one, but we couldn't figure it out. Still crazy to think about. When I went for a walk, I was about 13, I encountered a man in yellow fisherman's clothes by a lake. I saw him while turning around, thought it was odd, and looked away. I looked back at him, he was still there, but I couldn't see his face. Nevertheless, he had a bicycle bell in his hands and used it to make some noise. I turned away, thinking to myself that this guy couldn't be real, and when I looked back at him, he was gone, I would have noticed him leaving the place, there was nowhere to hide or go without being noticed. I ran home as fast as I could. Years later, my best friend told me she experienced something similar when she was lured to an old well by a strange bell noise. She saw a man standing behind her in robes when she decided to run away from the well. We checked it out, and there are German mythological creatures called Neck, Wassermann, who are commonly known for luring young girls into the water by making noises like a harp and bell. About three years ago, me, my sister, and a cousin were driving back home from the movie theater when we encountered a really strange occurrence. I can't explain the feeling I get, but when I think about it, I get tears in my eyes and feel that fear that spread all through my body when it happened all over again. Basically, I was in the back seat, and my sister was driving. We were on a back road in a very rural county, in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, and we were about 5 minutes from my house. The stretch of road we were on was completely straight and was surrounded by thick woods. It was pitch black, so you could only see about 100 feet in front of the car. So we were driving, and all of a sudden, 
about 100 or so feet ahead of us and over a little hill in the road, we saw a large white thing walking across the road in an upright position. In a really weird fashion, it hit us all as absolutely terrifying. With no thought at all, we all started screaming. We drove up on it, and it was no longer standing up. In fact, it was a large white dog. And it just sat down. Right in the middle of the road. I don't know what kind of dog does that. We were all terrified, so my sister drove off the road around it. We kept driving, talking about how scary and off that was, when the craziest thing happened. This is what really scares me to this day, about half a mile up the road, the exact same dog comes walking back into the road. And no kidding, he sat down in front of our car. You can only imagine how terrifying that was. To this day, it scares me to death just to think about it. Needless to say, I don't live there anymore. My mom has told me strange stories about when I was a kid and the things I would claim to have seen. Apparently, these were things a six-year-old wouldn't really know about. Anyway, fast forward about 14 years, and I'm living with my grandparents. They purchased a home in a subdivision and picked a plot of land to have it built on, so they were the first and only people living in this home. I have no explanation for what I've experienced. But I would see shadows and little glowing balls of light here and there. Nothing too creepy. Except for the hallway. They had an L-shaped hallway, and my bedroom was at the end of the hallway. So to get to my bedroom, I would have to turn a corner and go to the end of the hallway. Right after turning the corner, we would feel a sense of dread. Like something was right behind you about to snatch you up, but once you cross the threshold to your bedroom, the feeling went away. This happened every time, day or night. Then, one night, myself, my grandmother, and my husband were watching TV. Just some comedy movies I don't remember. Anyway, the den slash computer room doors were in the living room. They were double doors that opened up wide. While we were watching the movie, we heard children laughing. The only child in the home was my one-year-old, and she was sleeping on the couch next to my husband. So I got up and opened the den doors, expecting to see my grandpa on the computer watching some videos. The lights were off, and there was nobody there. We shrugged it off, finished our movie, and went to bed. The next morning, we were all in the kitchen talking about the previous night, and my brother and his girlfriend walked in. They asked what we were talking about, so I told them about the children laughing. They both turned pale and looked at each other. It turns out they had a Ouija board and were playing with it that previous afternoon. They started to hear children laughing outside their bedroom, quickly said goodbye, and then put the board in the den. I told them to burn it, and we never heard the laughter again. I've got two. I saw a hand, all long and gray skinned with long, deep gray nails, curl around the downstairs bathroom door when I was really little, pre being allowed to watch any horror movie. I jolted upright in bed once to see a little girl touching my new robe with an ice skating reindeer on it, saying how cute it was. She didn't scare me at all. I was just surprised. She vanished when I blinked, but the robe was moving. I heard a bell ring by my ear, super loudly, also while sleeping, and then a man whispered a name in my ear, like Billy or something, very loudly. It was so unbelievably real, I truly thought someone was in the house. I slept with a bat for months afterwards. When I was 20-something in my apartment, I woke up out of nowhere. Just bolt upright with a gasp, heart pounding, fully awake, like I'd just been injected with adrenaline. I saw a man standing in front of my closed bedroom door, but after a blink, I realized it was just a towel hanging up. As soon as that thought hit me and I started to relax, I realized there was literally no way for a towel to hang on that door, especially when it was closed. I looked at it again, and that's when I saw it was too far forward, not close enough to the door, and then I saw the shape of the man. The curve of his head beneath the cloth, the bulge in his nose, his thin shoulders, the hem of the towel ending a few inches above his relaxed elbows, his long legs covered in loose pants I stared at it, waiting for it to go away like it always did, but it didn't. Without breaking contact, I woke up my so next to me. The second he saw the towel hanging there, it fell straight down and pooled on the floor. Once the man vanished, I could see the wood of the door far more clearly from the streetlights coming in through our super shitty blinds. It wasn't so black anymore. I went right back to bed, way too used to this kind of SHT, but my so had a long night. I'm pretty sure that thing fed off fear and that's why it wanted me to see it. Camping at a friend's family property with a group of friends they had a huge, dingy shop full of old tools and old furniture that was super creepy. Dirt floor, clown paintings in the loft, not even kidding. We stayed up late drinking by the fire, and I was the last one awake. I went to pee on the side of the shop and stood about 5 feet away, looking inside through the window. There was a fluorescent light on, and I noticed what looked like a piece of paper or dollar kind of floating around. 
I thought it was a moth at first, but it was moving in a very flowing figure eight pattern that was very rhythmic. It reminded me of dangling a carrot. I watched it for maybe 20 seconds, which felt like forever. Then it quickly floated back to the corner of the shop, where it was dark. There was also a wooden chair near the corner that added to the creepiness. It could have been a moth, though. I sat back down by the fire to finish my beer and have a smoke. No one else was awake, so I played on my phone for a while. I noticed my friend Mark pop out of his tent to pee, then go back in to go to sleep. I decided sleep sounded good, so I went to my tent and fell asleep. The next morning, we were having breakfast, and Mark said, I saw you guys sitting by the fire super late, how late did you stay up? I told him it was probably 2 or 3 am then he said, who was up with you? I told him I was the last man standing. He said, I got up to pee and saw you on your phone and two people over your shoulder watching you play. He said one person looked bigger, so he thought it was one of our friends, who was a bigger dude. He said the other person was taller and skinny, but none of us are noticeably tall or skinny. Freaked me out. We still camp at that property once a year, but I don't go in the shop, and I go to sleep whenever my wife decides she's tired. I've got a few from my grandparents' ranch, the original house was built in the early 1800s, and the graveyard of the original family is still there. When my family first bought the property, the previous owners were still living there for a few weeks until they moved. My grandpa was out riding around and saw a guy from a distance dressed in slacks and a white shirt or suspenders. My grandpa assumed it was the previous owner, so he drove up to say hi. As he got closer, the guy walked behind a bush and seemingly disappeared into thin air. He told the previous owner about it, and he asked, was he wearing a white shirt and suspenders? Apparently they've seen him a lot wandering around in the evening, almost always where my grandpa saw him too. A few months later, when I first visited, me and my cousin were playing PS2 in the living room around midnight. There is a huge sliding glass door facing the backyard and barn. I noticed two people walking around outside with what looked like rifles and Civil War caps. It looked like they were marching almost, eventually, they kept going into the darkness while me and my cousin were shitting ourselves in silence. Nothing really happened for the next few years besides footsteps and weird feelings. I would hear super loud footsteps at night and assume it's someone walking into the kitchen. I got creeped out, so if someone else was awake, I would take that opportunity to go get food. When I realized no one else was awake, I ran back into my room. Fast forward to when I lived there during college. I had my own little cabin down the road, and it was really creepy but cool. One night I had a friend over, and we were up pretty late. We heard some footsteps on the gravel outside and then louder footsteps on the front porch. Then I saw a silhouette of someone walking through the window. I jumped up to go make sure it wasn't some meth head, but when I walked out front, there was nobody there. And it's an open area, so there would be no place for anyone to run or hide. It's safe to say we didn't get any sleep that night. This was on the Devil's Backbone in Texas, BTW. If you know the stories of that area, you know it's a creepy ass place. A few years ago, some friends and I were driving on some back roads in a patch of wood believed to be haunted. One of my friends was getting bored, so he rolled down his window and shouted, make something happen or something along those lines. About five seconds after he rolls up the window, there is a strong, seemingly too well timed to be natural knock on the window closest to me. We've seen some weird stuff in those woods, but nothing that couldn't be explained by shadows or animals. There is no explanation for that knock. Nothing was thrown at the car, we weren't moving, it sounded the way a knock made by a human hand sounds, etc. A few years ago, my ex-boyfriend's best friend bought a house, and we all moved in together. It started out small, like every once in a while I'd get this twinge of fear or discomfort when I was alone in the house. Then I started noticing my dog refused to go in the basement. Refused. The basement was unfinished and had rough walls and dirt floors in some parts because the house was just old. That's where the laundry was. I noticed she would follow me to the first landing on the stairs and then sit or lie there watching me, but she would not, for the life of her, come down. I even tried feeding her down there once, coaxing her with treats, but nothing. One afternoon, my roommate and I were watching TV in the living room. And I started hearing some sounds like doors moving or floorboards creaking, and they just didn't sound right, but that's crazy, right? So I didn't say anything. Eventually my roommate muted the TV and asked, are you hearing that? It sounded so distinctly like there was a person in the house with us that when we went upstairs to look, he deadass stopped me on the stairs and said to me, I just want you to know I have a gun in the house. Nothing there. After a few weeks, that feeling of discomfort when alone in the house was very, very palpable. It was just so uncomfortable to be there alone. One afternoon, again, 
I was sitting in the living room watching TV, except this time I was alone with my dog. The staircase is to my right. My dog suddenly jumps up and looks right up the stairs, like she sees something. She starts barking, and I try to quiet her. She calms down for a second but then keeps getting up and barking, staring up the stairs, walking up to the bottom of the stairs, and then backing away and growling. She is freaking me out. The duck. Out. My heart is fully pounding, and I need her to stop. So I figure I will take her upstairs and show her there is nothing there, so she calms down because there's nothing there, right? Because I'm alone in the house? So I kind of gently guided her up the stairs, and sure, nothing was there. I decide I might as well tidy my room while I'm up here, so I walk to the end of the hall and flip on the light to my room, and the light bulb pops, sparks, and goes the duck out. So at this point, I'm like, okay. Either there is something here and you can run away in fear, there is something here and you can stay and show you aren't afraid, or you can calm the duck down and stop being jumpy because this is just a weird coincidence. So I decided to stay. I walk across the room and start making the bed, when my pineal gland just starts screaming at me that there is something in the room with me. And the hair on the back of my neck rises. And my dog starts to growl. And the blinds to my right snap up and start spinning, I shit you not. I dropped everything, turned around, grabbed my dog and my bag, and ran out of the house. I did not come back until everyone else was home. But that's not even the worst. A few weeks later, I woke up dreaming in the middle of the night, sort of floating somewhere between awake and asleep, and in this lucid dream I think I'm having, a man in a suit comes out of the closet, walks across the room, and leans down over my ex-boyfriend's head like he is going to whisper something in his ear. In real life, my ex-boyfriend rolls over, pushes me a little, and says, baby, stop wiping stuff on my face. The next morning, when we woke up, my ex said he had a strange lucid dream where someone came out of the closet and whispered in his ear, are you happy now? Say what you will. But this shit happened. It was a dark period in my life and my exes, and I truly think that something in that house fed off of all the pain and anger in us both that we were carrying around, and I think that genuinely gave whatever was there enough of its own energy to actually manifest itself. We moved. I used to do regular volunteer work at a religious shrine, and since I had to travel halfway across the country to get there, I was provided with accommodations. Said accommodations date back centuries, and every time I stayed in them, something would happen that could not be explained in any logical way, but this story is my favorite. I had traveled all day, arriving at the shrine just as they were about to stop serving the evening meal. I grabbed some food and a shower before falling into bed, since I was exhausted. I woke up around 3 in the morning to a woman's voice saying in a broad Yorkshire accent, right next to my ear, are y'all right, love? I replied that I was fine the way you do when you're still half asleep and not really focusing, and the next minute I was sitting up in bed with all the lights on, asking myself what the hell just happened. I managed to get back to sleep eventually, and then the following morning I ran into a member of staff who had known me for many years. He asked how my journey had been, and I said that it had been fine but that something really weird had happened during the night. He asked what room I'd been put in, and when I told him, his response was, oh, what did she say to you? Come to find out that this was always the last room they would put anyone in because so many people had complained of hearing things in there, and when that wing of the building was being renovated, the builders used this room to store their equipment and always found things moved around. I have to say that after the initial shock, I wasn't scared, because my dad, who had a great interest in the paranormal, had always told me that what most people think of as ghosts aren't malicious, but people who've lost their way and can't move on. Shortly after I was born in 1978, my parents decided to move out of NYC to the suburbs. They figured this would be a better place to raise children. They bought a house in Syosset, New York. The split-level house had three bedrooms, a living room, a dining room, a separate kitchen, and a den, which included a fireplace. In addition, there was a partly finished basement with a guest room, a billiard room, and a bar. The unfinished part of the basement included a boiler room and a laundry room, as well as a toilet. We lived in this house until 1986, when my parents realized that living in the city might be better after all. Both my parents, in particular my mother, were deeply unhappy there. I remember my parents fighting and my mother crying. This may be because we were an ethnically diverse family in a largely white, conservative, petty bourgeois town. We always felt like outsiders there. As early as I can remember, I was terrified of the basement. The area by the bar had a particularly dark, ominous feeling to it. I was also terrified of the main level of the house at night and would rarely leave my room after being put to bed. I realized this could be chalked up to being a young boy, and I'm certainly not convinced that this was something paranormal, but I'll recount some of my stories and those of my family members. 
Most of the stories of my family members were disclosed years after we moved from the house, over Christmas dinner, when the wine had made my mother, my father, and my sister willing to share their own experiences. The earliest memory that I have of my room was waking up to the sound of cackling laughter, like that of a witch. The laughter stopped shortly after I woke up. I clearly remember hearing it, and I was petrified, frozen stiff. I was so scared, I didn't get out of bed and run to my parents' room. I stayed completely still until, I assume, I fell asleep again. Of course, this could have been a hypnagogic or hypnopompic hallucination, but it felt so very real. My mother would avoid going down to the basement to do the laundry alone. When she was down there, she felt something sinister and menacing watching her, eventually coming up behind her as if breathing down her neck. I remember several times hearing her race up the stairs and slam the door to the basement shut. She always claimed that something chased her up those stairs, which is indeed a common feeling people have in basements, haunted or not. My father claimed that when he was home alone, he would hear the BR balls, grouped in a triangle formation, break, as if someone were starting a game. He did not go down to investigate alone, but when my mother came home, he made up an excuse to go down together, and the table and the balls were untouched. There was a hamper slash chute that connected the bathroom on the ground floor with the laundry room in the basement. This saved you the trouble of lugging laundry downstairs. You would take your dirty clothes, throw them down the chute, and they would fall and land on the laundry room floor. Whenever I opened the chute door, you could glide down to the basement. In my mind's eye, there was always a face looking up, menacingly grinning, taking pleasure in frightening a child. Every time you opened that chute to throw your clothes down, it was as if this thing was waiting for you and staring up. When I disclosed this story to my family over Christmas, some 20 years later, my sister's eyes got wide, and she said, you felt it too. My parents wouldn't go into detail, but they had the impression that something very bad had happened in the basement, most likely a suicide. My sister and I pressed them for more information, but they refused and played down anything supernatural. After we moved out in 1986, my parents initially had trouble selling the house. We'd go back to check on it from time to time, rake the leaves, clean out the gutters, etc. The empty house had an even worse feeling. You couldn't close up and get out of there fast enough. Every time we drove away, there was a sense of relief. The house just felt terrible. I'm a long-haul truck driver. I used to run between Texas and Northern California, which regularly took me across Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico. Because of the climate of the desert southwest, I preferred to start my driving around sundown and stop for the day before the sun reached its peak. Therefore, I do the majority of my driving under the stars. Now, I don't care who you are, but I am willing to bet that if you don't believe in aliens and UFOs, you'd believe in them after driving across New Mexico after 2 a.m. On my first nighttime drive across New Mexico, I pulled over to check on another driver who was standing next to his own truck in the middle of the road. He completely ignored me, looking up in the sky instead. I asked him what he was looking at when I saw them. Dozens of lights, some pulsating in different colors, dance around in the sky. It was almost like watching a swarm of fireflies. Eventually, they seemed to line up in two different directions. That's when we noticed all the stars had seemingly disappeared. Eventually, we realized that something massive, and I mean big, like bigger than a star destroyer from Star Wars, big, was above us but was completely silent. All the smaller lights seemed to disappear into whatever the big thing was, and it just seemed to fade into nothing. Within a few blinks of our eyes, the big thing was gone, and all that was left were just the stars. We were so focused on the lights and the giant, dark shape that we never noticed three more truckers had stopped, as well as a young couple in their Jetta. At least seven of us witnessed whatever this was. Later, when I recounted the story at a TA diner, three older drivers started telling me that stuff like that happened regularly across New Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada. So often, in fact, that many people who live and travel out there don't even bother reporting it. The waitress confirmed what they'd told me as well, adding that her brother was a sheriff's deputy nearby and that his police department had an entire set of file cabinets full of reports about these UFOs. Some date back to the 1960s.